Northern Cree Mandaree 2017 here on Indigenous Insights. We also heard from Little Otter, one recorded here in the KBIC 2017. We also had some Blackstone back there for you. Ketchener, after a luncheon here in the KBIC this past week, I had the great opportunity to meet and speak with Native American activist, economist, writer, and Ojibwe from the White Earth Band. Here are some wise words from Winona Laduk. This is Indigenous Insights, Eagle Radio's weekly Anishinaabe radio program, and I'm at the KBOCC here in Baraga, and I have the great opportunity to sit with Winona Leduc. Ani Winona. Ani, how are you? I'm doing great. Ani Zhichgian. That's, I guess, how we say that, right? Anish, uh, Anishna is how my teacher taught oh, yeah. me. And, same uh, thing, same yeah. thing, yeah. Nishin. It's all good, it's all good. Always. So, you know, we did promote it on the show, so people know why you're here, but why don't you tell us, what are you doing in our neck of the woods? Well, I, you know, I... Uh, I'm, I'm traveling through, I'm visiting with you guys, but I spent the uh, past five years uh, fighting the Enbridge Corporation and their big pipelines. And uh, like in our territory, they had one that they came through, they want to put in a few years ago. We fought them for four years, and last year we defeated them. That was called the Sandpiper, fractile pipeline out of North Dakota. And then, uh, so now they're back with line three. And um, my tribe, my every five tribes intervened, and our organization did, and uh, so we're on the ground, and uh, we're working hard on it, and we, we have a good shot. We have a good shot at keeping more oil from coming your way. So I just, you know, I came out here to talk about that and to say stay strong, and uh, and then, like, where are we going? That's kind of my question. Like, where, what are we going to do? You know, are we going to hang out and wait for someone to give us an opportunity, or are we going to just do it? And as you travel around and speak to crowds, what do you find the general attitude of the people is? People are really interested in local foods and local energy. People don't think the system works. People want to be healthy. You know, our communities are full of heartache. We all got the same problems, whether it's, um, you know, self-medication and meth, you know, and heroin overdoses or, you know, diabetes. And, and you know, I feel like we're coherent people. You know, this is the seventh generation, and it's a time to seventh fire. It's time to it's time to make that next step. You know, and where does food sovereignty come into this whole thing? Yeah, I mean, I feel like our people fed ourselves for a long time, and and I just keep, keep remembering this figure. I think it was like 1850. You had like 463,000 pounds of maple sugar came out of Keweenaw Bay community, and I'm like, you guys are like <laughs> bigger than like Haiti. <laughs> or Cuba, you know what I'm saying? It's like, let's do that again. Yes. Let's bring back our sugar, you know, let's, let's bring back our trade, let's ensure our wealth and feed ourselves and then, you know, and then have a good export. And so it means different things, but a lot of it is like most of the work I do is in local food and, you know, I try to have like at least half the food. I, I have a pretty, you know, I probably have about 12 people at my dinner table most nights. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't have like a little family. I have a lot of, you know, and... Um, I guess we try to have, like, mostly local food. I did bring a knife in case I find a deer on my way home. <laughs> I love it. I love Let's it. Strap it on top of my rental car. All right. So, you know, we've talked about the decolonizing diet project here in the show, which is through Northern up the road, which is eating nothing but. Oh, yeah, that Martin. Oh, Martin, Martin. Reinhardt. Yeah, Marty Reinhardt. Smart guy. Yeah, we've, we've talked a lot about it, some of the recipes, the recipe book. What are some of your favorite DDP recipes and foods that you okay, like? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you, like, I like uh, my beaver tail hominy soup. Ooh. That's a good one because that beaver tail kind of tastes like salt pork but better. I'm, I'm a fan of that. I have made beaver tamales. I'm a little bit of a fusion cook. Um, yeah. You know, I like them fiddlehead ferns a lot. Um, I did cook up some mean buffalo roast for a week a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, and then I just fished my lake, oh. and and uh, I brought in northern walleye and bass and some suckers, and and I had I had to say I had to leave, so the suckers are going to get a little mushy, but I'm going to smoke them when I get back. Nice. And this is for all the local fishermen around here. How do you fish? I net. Oh, you net. Okay, using the treaty rights. Yeah, oh, I net, and that's I got a treaty right, and I net. And my I live on a lake. Oh, very good. And so I actually can't say I net because the proud moment for me was that my nephews netted. Oh. And brought in the fish. and How old are they? Uh, 17. 17, very good. Yeah, so I was proud that they, uh, it's my son and my nephew, and then, uh, but my nephew who, who never really had a shake at a lot of things, I don't know if you know any kids like that, but <laughs> he came back, he said, I like that. Oh, yeah? I hit him in the right spot? Yeah, I hit him in the right spot, that knitting, he liked that, he felt good about it. How's so. he like eating the fish? How's he like? It? He liked it. And he likes the product. And he was proud. We had a we had like our first Thanksgiving. That was the squash I grew, a rice that my my son parched, and that I I riced, and our fish, 
and uh, that my other son and my nephew caught, and then our, we have buffalo meat, and uh, I was pretty proud of us. We had our first, we had our first uh, you know, Thanksgiving feast here just before I left. And nothing tastes better than the food you get on your own. So. Yeah, I was proud. I was proud of my squash, and like my little contribution was I grew the squash, so I felt cool about it. <laughs> All right, so we're sitting here just after your luncheon on Wednesday, and you have a presentation of a Michigan Tech this evening. Is that going to be covering the same subject matter? No, I was. I mean, this was really geared for this community. Okay. I'm going to talk similarly about kind of post petroleum economics and where we need to go. You know, some general pictures. Um, but, you know, so people should come out if they're interested. And, and tonight I'll be showing a lot of pictures. I didn't show slides, uh, but I had a good time. So Very good. Uh, last, if people want to keep up with you, uh, with what you're doing, with some, maybe some of your current speeches. I know you're on YouTube. Where can they find you at? Facebook? or? Yeah, you can follow me on Facebook. And then I have to say I have a, a Kickstarter. If you got 10 bucks and you want to invest in me, I'm a good investment. Uh, 10, 20, whatever. It's uh, Winona's Hemp. Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I'm I'm uh, doing a big hemp field, and I grow. Um, you know, it's not marijuana. I grow industrial hemp uh, for fabric. For fabric, okay. I think that uh, that almost calls for a whole another interview, really. Yeah, that's gonna be. <laughs> ask me next year how I do, but I, you know, because I got to get all the equipment. But we're working on it. I'm pretty excited. So Very my cool. for my next my next round. So you all can right. follow us on Honor the Earth or Winona Laduke or Winona's Hemp Kickstarter. All right. Thank you very much, and have a good one. Yeah, you bet. Be good.